Hey, just a handful of notes really quick before we hop into the message. Uh, next Sunday is a really special Sunday uh, as we have Echo's final celebration Sunday and just a lot of fun and really meaningful things in store. I've got a message I cannot wait to share next Sunday. Uh, we're going to be having uh, just one service at 10 a.m. Uh, that may not mean much to you all, but we're going to do a little something different next week with our dream team, have a little breakfast with them beforehand. Everybody's invited afterwards uh, to um, the pavilion at Washington Township Park right here close by where um, the Connection Point folks have a, a reception set, us, set up for us to kind of go back and, and hug and uh, be there to hang out and uh, just do some high-fiving and uh, I believe eating some cake together. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, to that. Uh, on April 10th, uh, Katie and I will meet all of you up at the Brownsburg campus for the 11.15 a.m. service. I uh, would highly encourage you to be there by 11 a.m. so we can all sit together and uh, they're going to do a commissioning there uh, that Sunday for all that will happen here on April 17th, which will be the launch of Connection Point Avon. And really looking forward to that on Easter Sunday. Would highly encourage you to be here that Sunday uh, or even to serve that day. I know uh, they would love to have you on that team. If you haven't already, we've been emailing out a form to say, I'm going to participate. I'm going to be there. I'm interested in serving. This is a team I'm interested in. I would highly, highly, highly encourage you to do that. If you're like, I don't get emails from you, uh, just say, I'd go back to the, our slide earlier, which was we echo to 94,000. We echo, all one word, to 94,000. And you will be getting those emails. You'll get that form you can fill out. That is the best next step to go from us <laughs> over to Connection Point Avon, okay? Echo to Connection Point Avon. Fill out that form and say, hey, here's where we're at. And uh, here's how we're going to be uh, diving into all that is ahead. And I truly believe that the best is yet to come. I do. I believe that with all of my heart, which is why we've been walking out this road with God and trusting him every step of the way. In fact, let me start up my message uh, right there. In the life of every follower of Jesus, uh, there comes a time when they must make a, a, a critical decision. Uh, simply this, will I continue to lean on my understanding or will I cross over, listen to, and pursue the wisdom of God? In other words, am I still running the show or is my Savior, the creator of the universe, now in charge? My, my question is simply this today, where am I placing my faith? Whose voice am I obeying? Uh, where is my weight leaning in fact, a couple of years ago, our family went to Disneyland, and I was reminded of the importance of where you place your weight matters. Our family is a big fans of Disney. Any Disney World fans here in the house? Anybody? A couple. The rest of them are there right now. Like, they're all, like, down in Disney World as we speak. Uh, I, I love Disney World, but I'm not a fan of lines. Anybody else? Like, <laughs> I don't know how I reconcile the two, but somehow I kind of figure out how to make it all work. And inevitably, when I'm in a line, I'm looking for a spot to place my weight. Are you with me? Like, I need a, I need a place to take the weight off of my feet, off of my legs, and off of my back, and to rest. Somewhere to lean. On this particular day, uh, me and uh, two of our girls, I say two of our girls, we have two girls, me and the two girls, let me say it that way, were in line, Aiden would be like, hey, why did you make it sound like there were three girls, there are two girls and a boy, okay, moving on. On this particular, particular day, me and the girls were on Big Thunder Mountain, uh, which we absolutely love, one of our favorites, but even with a fast pass, it can often mean a line, a long line of waiting just to get up to, you know, a couple minutes of, you know, crazy fun and speed. There are these moments when you're in line where you're, you're, you're stuck in the line and you, you feel like it's going to move, but it never does. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you're like, I just need, we need to make camp here. We should have had somebody bring us lunch here. Like, we're going to be here for a while. There's a, a, the other times where you, you start to kind of find the place to put your weight, but then the line just kind of keeps moving as people keep shifting and you can't find your spot to to settle. It was kind of one of those lines that particular 
day. I, I, my, my legs were aching, my feet were tired, my back was ready to be done, and I was just looking for a spot to put my weight, and I found this spot where there was like this half wall. I was just going to lean up here and catch a breeze. It was kind of hot that day, and uh, to my surprise, as I'm starting to lean back, the girls start walking forward. The line is actually moving, and as I'm leaning back, I keep going backwards. <laughs> they kept going forwards. I kept going backwards. It, it was not a wall. It was actually a door. <laughs> and when I leaned back against them, my butt hit the lever, and I almost fell off of Big Thunder Mountain. In fact, the next time we went on to the ride, I took a picture. Now, you can clearly see there's a lever there, and it's a door, but I didn't notice it when I walked up the first time, and I leaned right against it, and you can see it's just kind of like a vast nothingness behind it. I guess there's probably like a path for a crew, but I just kept falling backwards. The girls kept going forwards. I almost fell off Big Thunder Mountain. Thankfully, before I made a big fool of myself, I finally <laughs> caught my weight, tried to walk forward in line as though nothing happened, but everybody it's one of those like everybody saw it. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody, everybody saw this guy make a fool of himself. Why am I bringing that up? I think it's a perfect image for what I want us to think on today, and it's simply this. Where am I placing my weight? Where am I placing my trust? Like, what am I leaning up against with all the weight of my life and all of my trust? If you're trusting in your wisdom, I just want to let you know today, it is not an immovable wall. It is a shifting door with a quick-release lever. (laughs) You're going to fall off a big thunder mountain. But if you're trusting and placing your way in God's voice, in God's prompting, in God's ways, it is a firm and sturdy wall upon which you can place all of your weight. Whose voice, whose words are you obeying in your life? Yours or God's? I mentioned at the very beginning, there comes this critical moment where you've got to make the decision, who's calling the shots in my life? Life. Today we're in part four of a series we've been calling Heaven on Earth, and we're looking at how we as followers of Jesus are called to be kingdom bringers, to bring the hope of heaven right here on earth. And in week one we were talking about our focus, like our focus determines our direction. So in other words, where am I focusing first? What am I pursuing first in my life? Because it matters. In week two, we began talking about how our ability to hear from heaven will impact our ministry here on earth, learning to hear the voice of God so we can be the love of God wherever we go. As a follower of Jesus, in week three, we were talking about how wherever you go, there's an opportunity for the light of God to bring, uh, to come into the darkness and bring his hope and his love. We were talking about how our way of living wherever we go is an opportunity for God's light to shine through. So in week one, we were talking about focus. Week two, we were talking about hearing. Week three, we were talking about our excellent way of living. Today, here in week four in this series, I want to talk about our obedience, our, our obedience to God. Am I living God first? Am I hearing from God? I'm living excellent in all these areas. And then when God speaks, am I obeying his voice? When God speaks into my life, whether it's through the word of God, whether it's through a prompting, whether it's through a group of people around me that love me, when God is speaking into my life, who's calling the shots, me or God? Do I know best or does God know best? It's such a critical part of following God and being a a bringer of the kingdom of God into the world. Even the king of Israel, Solomon, He recognized that the most important thing about your life is your answer to this question. Who's on the throne? If a king is talking about somebody else being on the throne of your life, we probably better listen. Some of you may even know this verse. It's this. Trust in the Lord. This is Solomon talking. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Now, I looked at the Hebrew this week for all. (laughs) It actually means all. Not some, not most. Not the, kind, not, not the parts of my life that I, that I want to give to him, but I'll hang on to those that I'm, that I'm actually better at handling. No, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And then do you see it? Do not lean on your own understanding. Because your understanding and mine, it's not an immovable wall, it's a door. <laughs> and we'll fall through it, we'll fall, off of, we'll fall off the mountain. He goes on to say this, in all your ways. In all your ways. At work, at church, at home, in school, 
in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Make sure you're inviting him into the conversation. Make sure you're knowing him first, and he will what? Make straight your paths. I I love how he ends with the promise. Solomon, the the king, is saying, my trust is in him. I love this. As the king, he's telling the people, just so you know, don't put your trust in me because my trust is in him and his ways and his voice. I'm not going to lean on me and my wisdom. I'm going to place all of my weight on him, not on my small understanding. Solomon was known as being the wisest man to ever live. And he's saying, no, no, the most important thing is who is on the throne. Don't trust your own wisdom Trust his. In all my ways, he says, I'm going to know him. I'm going to know his voice and his ways, his plan, his desire. And the promise is when you do, he will make straight your paths. In other words, he'll he'll get you to the life that he created you to live, but you first have to obey him and walk with him moment by moment, day by day. Now, here's what I know. This is an incredibly challenging thing to do because we like to be on the throne, don't we? (laughs) We like to call the shots, and it can be difficult to learn and to discern the ways of God. And yet Solomon says, when you do, you will get this life right, which is what all of us want, (laughs) to get this life right, to live out the purpose that God has for us. He's like, you've got to obey the voice of God. Now, I started off with this question. Am I still running the show or is God in charge? But perhaps I need an additional question to throw in here for each of us today. The question could sound like this. How can I obey God when it doesn't make sense? How can I obey God when it's really hard to do so? <laughs> How can I obey God when I really don't want to? I, I want to do it my way. Now, the scriptures tell us that when we were still sinners, meaning we were going our own direction, Jesus came and sought us out. You and I were going our own direction, and God steps into our lives. He saves us. He makes us alive. So suddenly, there's an about face. We were going this way. Now we're going this direction, which means it's really easy to turn around and keep going our own direction. Are you with me? For Years, we've been going our way, calling the shots, leaning on our wisdom. And then in a moment, Jesus changes us. And so it takes time (laughs) to start going his direction and his way. And it's easy to turn back around and say, no, I think I've got this one, God. (laughs) I think I know this one better. I'm not even going to wait on your voice. I'm not even going to pray about it. I think I know. No, no, Solomon said we've got to make sure we're acknowledging him. We're knowing him in all of our ways. Sometimes it's day in and day out. Sometimes it's moment by moment <laughs> that I'm just learning. No, I've got I've to turn towards his ways and invite him into this situation, which I'm pretty sure I've already got it all figured out. Sometimes following God is difficult. <laughs> Sometimes following God doesn't always make sense. Uh, let me give you an example just in my own life. I, I remember when I first started understanding the principle of tithing. And giving back to God. I understood it spiritually. I wasn't sure I wanted to get behind it intellectually. <laughs> I was just starting to understand this, this spiritual principle, right? So, so when I hold on to everything that God gives me, the scriptures would say, I'm robbing from God. The scriptures teach that the first 10% is his. The first 10, not the last 10, not somewhere in the middle. The first 10 goes back to him, and then I trust him with the rest. I got it spiritually. Intellectually, I'm like, God, I don't know how this can work. (laughs) I'm not making it work, God, on 100%. How can I make it work on 90%? And the spiritual principle is 90% God's way is always better than 100% your way. It's one principle that transcends into all of the other areas of our lives. (laughs) I'm going to trust him with the first, and he will take care of everything else. And I've shared here at Echo many times that as we began to trust God in that season of our lives, and it was really hard, as we began to trust God in that season, since that season of our lives, the blessings of God have not stopped. Does that mean financially? A little bit of that I mean financially, but I mean far more than financial, <laughs> vocationally, relationally. It just continues spiritually in our lives and the lives of our family because it's teaching us in one area 
what God wants in all of the areas of our lives. It was something I was having a hard time trusting him with. It didn't make sense. God, I don't understand this. It's hard. But when you obey his voice, you're opening up opportunities for God to move in all the areas of your life. God, I'm not going to close this one off. I'm going to open up all of them to you. I mean, vocationally, there was a, a season when we were frustrated and tired and I was certain I knew what was best. Anybody ever had those moments? <laughs> like, God, I know. I know what's best in this next season. I was praying for it. I was fasting behind it. Like, God, this is it. It's going to be this organization, and it's in this season. Like, God, I know it. In fact, I got an opportunity to, to interview for it. They flew Katie and I out. They're like, this, like, you guys are top of our list. We'll let you know in a couple days. You ever have those moments where they don't let you know in a couple days? <laughs> They overpromise and underdeliver. A couple days turned into a couple weeks, turned into a little bit longer, and eventually they call and said, "Oh, actually, we found somebody. We found somebody better." And I, I remember being devastated. Like God, I prayed for this. Like God, I knew this was the next best step for us. And over the next twelve months, that organization had some issues, and that role actually transitioned three different times in a matter of twelve months. And I remember thinking back and saying, God, I'm so thankful <laughs> that you didn't work things out my way. I'm so glad I didn't push that door open and try to make it all happen because I would have moved my family and it would not have worked out and we would have been miserable. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm so glad that you knew better, you knew higher than me. We, we've all had these situations in our lives. God, I know what you're saying, but it just doesn't make sense. I'm supposed to trust you with my finances when things are already tight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. God, I'm supposed to acknowledge you even at work when it feels like others are getting ahead doing it their way? Yeah, trust, trust me even at work. God, God, I'm supposed to trust you in that relationship when I really want to do things my way? No, no. Yeah, trust me and do things my way. God, I'm supposed to trust you at church when there's a, a transition that's going on? Yeah, tr tr trust me there too. Listen, I know you all don't think I know what you're thinking, right? <laughs> no, no, like, tr trust me in those areas. In fact, I think God would say, trust me, especially in the seasons of transition. I I'm reminded of what Corey Ten Boom would say. We've read this quote before, but I love it. She says this, when a train goes through a tunnel and it gets dark, you don't throw away the ticket and jump off. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you sit still and you trust the engineer. There are times in our lives when we're heading into the dark tunnel. And we want to throw away the ticket. We want to jump out. God, you don't know what you're doing. God, I thought it was going to happen just like this. And there are moments when you just need to sit still and trust the engineer. That God's going to bring you through it. God knows what he's doing, even if you don't. You don't have to understand it all. You just have to trust the one who does. You've got to be willing to sit still and trust God through those dark seasons. Solomon teaches us to trust God and all of our ways, to know him in all areas of our lives. And when we do, he will make our paths straight. Now, I, I want to directly link this principle to being a kingdom bringer, right? We, we, all want, we all seek to make a difference in our lives here on earth. God, use us so others can experience your hope and your grace and your peace. We desire to be God's love to a lost and hurting world. And to do that, we must acknowledge him in all of our ways. Let me, let me give you my big idea. We're going to break it down here for just a few more minutes. The big idea is simply this. Your impact on earth is a direct result of your obedience to heaven. Your impact on earth is a direct result of your obedience to heaven, which is why it's so important to learn to hear his voice, and then you've got to have the courage to follow it. Because if you're going to make the impact that you want to have here on earth, you want to live out the purpose that God has for you, you've got to learn to hear, and you've got to learn to obey. When we're following God's voice, we have exponential impact in our homes and in our schools and in our places of work and in our neighborhoods. And we'll get to see through our lives people finding hope and healing and grace and mercy. But you got to trust God's voice. Sometimes you got to sit still on the train and not jump ship. you got to wait it out. Even if it doesn't make sense to us, whose voice are you leaning against today? Here's what I'm going to do with our remaining time. We're going to look at uh, Luke chapter 5. And in looking at Luke chapter 5, I think we're going to discover two, two prayers that we can pray. When it's hard to follow God. When it's hard to trust Him. We don't always understand what it is that He is doing. Luke chapter 5, and we're going to discover two prayers. Let's hop into it. 
Luke chapter 5, verse 1 simply says this. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him, talking about Jesus, to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. It's also the Sea of Galilee, the same place. Verse 2. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Let me just ask a quick question. Why are they washing their nets? Because they're done with working. (laughs) All right? This is 5 o'clock. This is 6 o'clock. Whatever time you get off of work, they're done. They've been fishing all night. It didn't work. They're cleaning the nets, and they're going home. Verse 3. Getting into one of the boats. Don't you just love Jesus? (laughs) Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land. <laughs> Jesus, I just, I just want to go home. <laughs> Jesus, I'm tired. Jesus, don't ask something from me. I, I've been doing my job, and now I want to go and rest. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down, and he taught the people from the boat. Now, I, I love how it says he told him to put out a little bit from the land. That's the, the, the shallow waters, right? This is where you and I would go in and maybe you'd get up to your ankles or to your knees. This is where the kids would splash around when they're getting into the water. It's the shallow waters. But pretty soon he's going to take him beyond the shallow waters. Verse 4. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep. Do you see the juxtaposition? We've been hanging out in the shallow waters, Simon, but I'm about to take you deeper. Maybe Jesus is inviting somebody in here today to kind of venture beyond the shallow waters, trust his voice, obey his voice out in the deep waters. He says, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, we have to find this humor. Sometimes we read back on the Bible and we don't always see the humor in it. But this is Jesus, right? This is the preacher who's telling the fishermen how to fish. Uh, Here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to get in the boats. We're going to go out. You're going to let down your nets. Thank you, preacher. (laughs) We know what we're doing. We've done it all night, and it didn't work. But he says, let down your nets. Now, he's getting all up in their business and doing this. Uh, I'm going to teach you guys how to use your tools. This is what you think you know, but let me tell you what you don't know, right? I know beyond you. I see beyond what you can see. I think the inference for us today would be something like let down your computers, let down your phones, let put down your hammer, like whatever your tools of your trade is, where your safety and security is, let those down, and I'm going to invite you to trust me out in the deep waters. And it says this in verse 5, and Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and we took nothing. (laughs) Chad, why are you yelling? Because there's an exclamation point. You guys see it? Jesus, we worked all night. We caught nothing. We know what we're doing. Why are you asking us to do something that doesn't make sense? We we got this all figured out, Jesus. We were mending our nets. We were cleaning them. We were ready to call today. We were going to go get some supper from somebody else because we didn't catch any fish. Jesus, no, we're going to go out into the deep waters, and I want you to let down your nets. Jesus, why are you asking us to do something that doesn't make sense? We are the fishermen after all. We know what we're doing. Peter's the fisherman, just like you're the parent, just like you're the spouse, just like you're the student, just like you're the businesswoman, just like you're the professional. Jesus, I got this. (laughs) I don't need you coming in and butting into my business. Why do you get to call the shots in all the areas of my life? And Solomon would tell us, when we acknowledge him in all of our ways, he will make our paths straight. And what Peter says next, even after yelling at Jesus a little bit, it's a game changer. Not just for him, but it's a game changer for you too. He says this in the second part of verse 5, but at your word, I will let down the nets. If, will you all say that back with me? We'll all just read it together out loud. Come on, just real loud once. Here we go. But at your word, I will let down the nets. At your word, Jesus. I know we've told it all night, but at your word, we will let down the nets. You've spoken. You're on the throne. 
you know greater than I, because you said so, I'm going to let down the nets. Even in this arena where I think I know best, where I've called the shots all these years, I'm going to invite you in. Where I assume I know the best, I will acknowledge you and your voice, and at your word, I will pivot from what I think is best. Because you're on the throne, you're calling the shots, and at your word, I will let down the nets. I will put down my comfort and my security and call in the shots and I will trust your voice. Simon's saying, I'm going to lean against your wisdom over mine. (laughs) I'm going to lean not on my wisdom and my sense of security. I'm going to let down my way of doing things. And then verse 6, and when they had done this, when they shifted, when they obeyed at the voice of Jesus, they enclosed a large number of fish and their nets were breaking. This has never happened to them before. They signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and to help them, and they filled up both boats so that they began to sink. And the principle is clear. Even when God invites us to do things that don't make sense, they are always best. His ways are always best. Even when we don't understand them, His direction and His ways are always best best. You've waited patiently for the prayers. Let me give you the first prayer. It's simply this. Prayer number one, God help me to obey you even when I don't understand you. God, God, would you please help me to obey you even when I don't understand you. Simon doesn't understand Jesus, but at his word he obeys and he lets down the nets. Let me ask you a question this morning. Where is Jesus asking you to let down your nets? Where is Jesus saying, I'm going to invite you to stop leaning on your wisdom and your confidence, and I'm going to invite you to lean in to my wisdom and obey me? Where is God asking you to trust, but you're having a hard time obeying? Last week we talked about how we don't want to participate with the darkness because we're called to be the light. Maybe there's a habit in your life, and Jesus says it's pulling you down, and you've got to let down that net and trust me. Maybe you're struggling to Forgive someone. And Jesus is saying, it's time for you to forgive as you've been forgiven. Maybe you, there's an area at work where you've been lacking integrity. And you're like, no, all the areas of my life, all the areas of my work, I want to have integrity. I want to do it his way. I'm going to let down the nets of doing it my way. Maybe it's trusting God with the next step. Maybe here at church. Maybe at work. In friendship. In a, in a relationship. God's saying, I need you to let down your nets and do it my way. As I was preparing this week, I was uh, thinking about a gentleman in our church, and I'm not going to say his name because we are recording, but I I, I did get his permission to to share this. And for a long time, he's been struggling and incredibly frustrated and overwhelmed at work. And there were plenty of times where he could have just jumped ship and said, enough, (laughs) it's their mess, I'm going to let them figure it out, but I'm done. In the middle of it, in the midst of putting in ridiculous hours early all the way to late and filling in for people that are dropping like flies. He was going through his own health issues, and he was just, we were constantly talking and praying together. What's the best next step? And plenty of times where he wanted to stop, (laughs) plenty of times where he wanted to quit, but in the midst of it, he was praying. Even went on a 40-day fast. Come on, somebody. I said, God, I want to pursue your ways. I I want to hear your voice in the process. And Times where he felt like he was going to quit but kept on trusting God. Even other job opportunities that came up along the way and they just weren't the right ones until just recently, walking with God, doing it God's way in God's time, he actually starts tomorrow a brand new job because he's been walking with God, trusting him in the process. Yeah, come on, somebody. If you knew the story, you'd be standing up applauding. Like it's because he was trusting God and doing it his way and, and his timing. Plenty of times we were talking on the phone. He's like, I don't know. I think maybe I missed it. I'm like, no, I don't know. I don't. Keep, keep, keep waiting. <laughs> God's got something better for, for you. Trusting God, even when it's tough, is all over the scriptures, right? There's, there's moments where Jesus will say, don't worry about tomorrow. And we'll be like, but Jesus, somebody should worry about tomorrow, shouldn't they? <laughs> like the world's a mess. Like who, who's going to worry about tomorrow? And Jesus, no, you pursue me first, and I'll take care of the rest. We are talking just a moment ago about tithing, right? You, you want me to trust you with 10%? How about 1%, Jesus? 10% is really hard. How about, how about 1%? And Jesus is like, no, you've got you to trust me with the first 10, and I'll take care of 
the rest. Over and over again in the scriptures, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge, acknowledge him. Now, you might have a hard time praying this prayer today, and I just want to say I understand that. In fact, there's going to be a few of us down front afterwards who would love to pray with you. We'd be honored to come alongside you and say, God, help me to obey you even when it's hard, even, even when it doesn't make sense, when I don't understand. We would be honored to pray alongside of you. Jesus, he, he gave Simon a simple action for obedience, but it carried great weight. Let down the nets. He was letting go of safety and security and calling the shots and doing things his way, and they hauled in this monstrous catch. Let's keep reading in the story. It says this, but when Simon Peter saw it, talking about all the fish, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. Now, isn't it interesting that Jesus says, do not be afraid. Why is Jesus telling Peter to not be afraid? They just caught some fish. What's the big deal? Jesus is shifting Peter's story. In fact, he's been called Simon. Pretty soon he's going to be called Peter. He's, he's even changing names. Jesus is actually inviting him not to just let down the nets out in the deep waters, but to let go of the nets and pursue an entirely different way of living. <laughs> Up until this point, he's been a fisherman. It's, the, it's what he learned. It's his trade. It's how he cares for his family. It's what he does. And Jesus says, do not be afraid. You're going to let go of the nets, and now you're going to fish for people. I'm going to give you a whole different way of living. Let down the nets was a small action that carried great weight. Let go of the nets. It's a big action, and it's going to shift his story for the rest of his life. Maybe God's inviting some of you in here today to, to let go of some nets, to let go of the safety and security, to, to let go of some way, ways that things have been done before, and, and to trust to trust him. All of us in here together, right? We have this opportunity to build on a great foundation and to launch something new, to, to reach our family, to reach our neighbors, to reach the city, to be a part of a movement across the state of Indiana. But we won't do it hanging on to the nets. See, you gotta, you gotta let go of the nets and you gotta trust, you gotta trust me. And oh, by the way, I understand if there's any angst inside of your heart. Before I invited you to do something hard, I asked God for the strength to, to step first. God, God, help me to trust you. <laughs> help me to let go of the nets of the safety and security of the past four and a half years of what I've known. And now I'm asking you to move forward with me, trusting God. And look at Simon's response, verse 11. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. They bring the boats up, they bring the nets in. That way, that story is done. Jesus has something better. Jesus has something different. And oh, by the way, Simon gets to be one of the leaders, one of the 12 that will change the world forever. From that moment forward, the world's going to turn upside down, and Simon's leading the way. When the Holy Spirit descends upon the city of Israel, and everybody's like, what's going on? It's Simon that steps forward and says, let me tell you about this man named Jesus. Over the course of 11 verses, Peter goes from swimming in the kiddie pool to pushing out to the deep waters. He goes from being frustrated that Jesus would ask him to do something that doesn't make sense to letting down the nets, ultimately letting go of the nets, because now nothing will take priority in his life over the voice of Jesus. Jesus says, yeah, I'm going to go fish for people. That's the direction I'm going. Can I teach you prayer number two? It's simply this. When, when you sense that your story is shifting, pray this prayer. God, help me surrender my story to you. God, there's things outside of my control. God, there's things I can't handle. I want to control it. I want to hang on to the nets. God, help me surrender my story to you. Do not be afraid, Jesus told him. I have a plan and a purpose for you. I will fulfill my purpose for your life, but you've got to trust me with all of your heart. 
if you'll trust me with all your heart, I'll get you to where you're going. I'll get you to the life that I created you for. But you got to lean not on your own understanding. If you'll acknowledge me in all your ways, I will make your paths straight. And as much as I love the wisdom of Solomon, I think Solomon got his trust from his dad, the greatest king, King David. In fact, if you go back to the Psalms, there's this moment where David, he's, he's kind of surveying the different nations around. He's, he's considering where, where do they place their trust? Where do they place their weight? Where do they, where do they lean against? And what makes us different as the people of God? And he says this, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we, we trust in the name of the Lord our God. That's what we've been singing about all morning. They trust in what they can see. They're trusting in their nets. They're trusting in their safety and their security and their resources and their, their big armies. But we, what makes us different? We trust in the name of the Lord our God. As I was preparing this week, I was reminded of, a, of another moment for Katie and I, whenever we were, we were pushed to challenge beyond what we could see. God, help us to surrender our story to you. In fact, I brought a picture along. You guys are welcome to put it up. It's just a, a picture of, this is me sitting here and Katie's across the table. And I just happened to take a picture this morning. We were kind of doing a staycation back when we lived in Jackson, Mississippi. The kids were actually up here with family and we were starting to sense that God was calling us out of Jackson, Mississippi, and he was calling us here to launch a life-giving church. And we hadn't made the decision. We really hadn't even told very many people about it yet. We were just trying, we were wrestling with all of it. As we were sitting this one morning and we were reading and we were praying and we were talking and just listening to God, while spending time in the presence of God, I got an email. I got an email inviting us to apply for a, a pretty lucrative position. Uh, if I'm being honest, it would have been a much easier job <laughs> with, a, with a much bigger platform. In fact, it was a, a, a speaking position at one of the largest, most influential churches over the past 20 years. And can I just tell you how grateful I am that we were listening to the Spirit of God and not to what we could see? I picked up my phone, I read the email, and I emailed back within seconds. Actually, God's calling us to do something differently, but thank you very much for the offer. Over the next couple of years, that church unfortunately imploded, and all of the leaders on that team, whether they were implicated in some of the issues or not, they all had to resign. And yet over the last four and a half years, we've been able to build something beautiful. And we've seen hundreds of people place their faith in Jesus, countless people step into the waters of baptism, thousands of seeds we've been able to plant, in people's lives. We've been able to build this beautiful foundation together. And I just wanted to say that to say, I'm so glad that I didn't trust in what I could see and what made sense to me and my wisdom and my knowledge. But I was placing my weight, I was leaning against the voice of God and trusting Him that, that He knows better than I the best next steps. Had I trusted in what I could see, who knows? But because we surrendered our nets, we left them in the boats and we're trusting God, what a beautiful story we've all written together. <laughs> what a beautiful foundation we've been laying together for all that God has in store. Prayer number one, God help me obey you even when I don't understand you. I pray today that by the end of the day, by the time you walk out, you can pray that with a smile on your face. <laughs> God help me to obey you even when I don't understand you. And God help me surrender my story to you. Your ways are higher than my ways. Your, your wisdom is higher than my wisdom. You, you see beyond what I can see today. And God, I'm placing my trust in you. I'm, I'm going to obey your voice and walk in courage. Can we pray together? Father, we thank you. We, we thank you for the, for the name of Jesus who writes a greater story with our lives than we can ever imagine, than we can even understand on this side of eternity that when we were going our own way you stepped off the throne you put on flesh you went to the cross for us all those standing around would say what a what a king this is that he would hang shamefully on a cross 
But you saw a bigger story. Three days later, he burst forth from the tomb. It's a new life making it possible for us not only to have new life, which will be more than enough, but you invite us to be kingdom bringers that point others to the name of Jesus. And God, we just want to walk in obedience to you. Would you just say that to God? God, I want to walk in obedience to you. And as you're praying, I, wish, I wonder which of those prayers you need, to, you need to lean into today. Maybe it's prayer number one. God, help me to obey you even when I don't understand you. Maybe it's prayer number two. God, help me surrender my story to you. As you're praying that prayer, God loves your prayers of surrender and faith. He's saying, I hear you, I'm with you, I'm for you. You you can trust me. I'm worthy of your trust. As we continue to pray, I'd love to pray for one group of folks in particular. Maybe you're here today and you've never placed your faith ultimately in the name of Jesus. You recognize that you've been placing all your faith on your own wisdom, on your own strength. And the Bible tells us that all of us are sinners, every one of us. There's nothing we can do to earn our way to heaven. But Jesus came and he took our punishment to forgive us. He he rose up from the dead to give us new life. And today you can have that new life. Today you can have that forgiveness. And I'd love to pray for you right now. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to come to the front or stand up. I'm just going to pray with you. You don't have to pray out loud. You can pray silently in your own heart, right along with me. I invite you to pray with me just right now, maybe something like this. If you say, today is my day, and I want to place my weight, my faith in Jesus, pray something like this. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I believe that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And when you came to the cross, you did so to take my punishment. And today I'm turning from my ways, and I'm turning to your ways. Maybe you pray something like this, Jesus, I I believe you rose up from the dead to new life. You were resurrected, which means I can be resurrected too, that my spirit can come alive, that I can live anew. Maybe you pray something like this, Jesus, I can't do this alone, but I need your Holy Spirit to fill me up from this day forward because I want to follow after you. Jesus, we know that you love these prayers. We love our faith and our trust. God, it's our prayer that we're walking out of here with greater obedience and greater trust than when we came in. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said together, amen, amen.